Hello, welcome back. We're going to talk about uh, who developed Unix now. Uh, before I jump into uh, the Unix, I would like to uh, take you through some of the historical aspects of uh, development of Unix. Uh, this was uh, something in 1965. Let's take a look at the history. 1965-66, I guess. Uh, people at AT&T this is a company, telecommunication company in the U.S., uh, AT&T. Uh, they wanted to build an operating system uh, which was network friendly, which was user friendly. So they started working on this uh, and then to build an operating system, they realized that they have to build or invent a programming language. So programming language has to be uh, P R O. I have a spelling mistake there. A programming language should be built which would make the job of building the operating system simple. So they started inventing the programming language and then they invented a programming language called a C for the whole and sole purpose to build the operating system. So this was to build the operating system and now C programming language has become extremely popular for other things also but uh, the history says that the purpose of the uh, C programming language was to build an operating system and they started working on this operating system they gave some different names to this operating system but eventually the name that became popular was Unix Unix became popular so who are these guys there was a team of people research scientist people who was responsible for building the C programming language and uh, these guys are very popular these days. I have a picture here in front of me. These are the two people. The names are Ken Thompson, Kenneth Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. These two guys kind of were what we call as uh, fathers of C. Okay, basically Dennis Ritchie was the main guy and therefore he is also named as the co-creator of Unix. In fact, he was uh, rewarded by uh, the President Bill Clinton for all the great work that he did. Uh, his period was from 1941 to 2011. Uh, awesome work, fantastic work that he has done and our entire IT industry owes him a lot for the great work that he has done in C programming language. So. He was the main monumental person who started C programming language or who invented C programming language and that was built or that was invented to build the Unix operating system. So now C is built. So in 1990, uh, sorry, 1969, Unix developers used this C programming language in the AT&T's Bell Lab. Bell Labs is the research division of AT&T in uh, New Jersey, US. Uh, and they built the Unix built the Unix operating system. Now, in 1975, AT&T makes the Unix available. <coughs> excuse me, to all of the educational institutions. Uh, this was one of the main steps AT&T took, and we really owe AT&T a lot for them. They made it available in the research uh, research departments of many educational institutions, and one of the main educational institutions which picked that up and made the great things out of it is the University of Berkeley, uh, California. Uh, so after 1975, it became extremely popular in the uh, PhD departments of all the computer science uh, departments of universities in the US. And uh, then additions were happening to uh, AT&T's versions and those versions were called as version 6, version 7. Later on it started calling, uh, we started calling that as uh, system 3. And uh, as that thing was going on in the, uh, the AT&T's research division, the, de the development was going on. At the same time, University of Berkeley, California, uh, or Uni sorry, University of California, Berkeley, uh, that is their main campus in Berkeley. Uh, they added major things to this Unix operating system and they started calling it as BSD Unix or BSD. And then what happened, many of the BSD's features were again incorporated by AT&T in 1983 and that was called as System 5 and it became very popular 
amongst the engineers and scientists. So as you can see, there were two variations of the Unix. Uh, AT&T created their own variation uh, and that, that became popular as System 5 and University of California started their own variation which was called as BSD. If you see the chart here, we started the Unix uh, at the very beginning in 1969. It was initially called as UNICS and then they changed the name to Unix. Uh, then the fifth edition came here uh, around 1975 the code was available, uh, was made available to universities and then when the seventh edition came around that time BSD went ahead on its own track and System 5 went ahead on its own track. Based on System 5 we have quite a few commercial uh, variations of Unix and based on BSD we have some open source uh, variations. So Solaris is uh, the commercial variation, AIX is from IBM, uh, IRIX is the Unix operating system from SGI, HPUX is a Unix operating system from HP, uh, Digital Unix is a Unix operating system from the DEC company. So likewise these are the variations of System 5 and on the right hand side here BSD's variations mostly happen in the open source technology, uh, free BSD, net BSD, open BSD and then all of these they kind of were merged in Linux which is an open source operating system that came in 1991. Now one of the main reasons why Linux was invented because people very much liked Unix. All this AIX, Iris, HPUX, they were great and they are still great operating systems. But the only problem with these operating systems was you had to purchase the hardware from IBM if you want to install AIX. You had to purchase the, uh, the uh, hardware from Silicon Graphics, SGI, to install IRIX and so on and so on. And therefore people who had no hardware, they wanted to work with Unix and how could they do that because they only had PCs at home and PC had a different hardware. PC had a hardware called as x86. So uh, Unix was on the uh, hardware hardware dependent and therefore Linux came up and which also is dependent on the hardware by the way but the hardware is extremely popular x86 hardware which means all of our PCs so because x86 is available to all of us at home Linux became very popular so uh, don't think that Linux is not hardware dependent it is still hardware dependent it runs on x86 architecture and uh, since all of us we have x86 architecture at home we are using Linux at home which is a variation of Unix and that's why many people ask me are you going to tell us about Linux or are you going to tell us about Unix and I tell them that they are very 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 similar it is almost like uh, are we going to work on Windows XP or are we going to work on Windows 7 yeah they are different to a certain extent but fundamentally they are the same so I would consider Linux as a variation of Unix which works on x86 hardware which are our PCs. So this is when the Linux started and the person who actually was responsible for Linux development is this fellow called as Linus Torvalds. He is from Finland University of Helsinki, Finland. So this guy started writing a lot of C programs which were running on the x86 architecture okay let me get back to my notes the x86 architecture and that became Linux and that is what we are going to work on going forward all the commands that we're gonna run in Linux I wouldn't say all the commands but most of the commands that we're gonna learn in Linux will also work in Unix the concepts are exactly the same the concept of a process the concept of an operating system the concept of how CPU is scheduled all these advanced concept the kernel concept they are exactly the same in Unix and Linux and commands are also extremely similar and you will not know the difference whether you are working on Linux or whether you are working on Unix until and unless you start going deeper and deeper into it so this is in a brief the introduction of Linux and introduction of Unix and I will tell you commercially the most popular operating system right now uh, is Linux is becoming extremely popular these days and it is kind of taking over the AIX which is still extremely popular 
it is also taking over HP UX, it is also taking over Sun Solaris. So all those proprietary operating systems now are becoming a little less known and Linux is picking up in the data centers, in the desktop area, in all of those things. So now this with the help of this Unix information, we will in the next video jump to actual Linux installation and certain other things and I will see you in the next video.